Yo, we're here at the 20 year anniversary of the Emerald Cup. Thank you so much, Tim Blake, for the invitation. I saw Sunshine here, and I had to ask her for an interview immediately before she disappeared back into the woods, you know? Sunshine, how are you? Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. You know, my confession on camera is that since the first time I've, I've seen you and met you, I always see, felt like this, this strong energy, you know? Like, you're really about the plan, really dedicated. I just got felt that energy, you know? Not knowing about your background with your mom and so forth. Um, so I just wanted to say that and say thank you for, for sharing a moment here. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful evening here in Area 101 in Laytonville. It's really cool to be back here at this location and be here with everyone. It's just such a classic Emerald Cup party this evening. Pop quiz, how many Emerald Cups have you been to? I don't know, I'm not really exactly sure. Uh, yeah, I think the first one I went to was at the Mateo in 2012. You've been to everyone since? Maybe. Wow, that's cool. I was going to guess around 10. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, in your mind, when you think about like everything that's happened this past decade, two decades, what do you think makes this Emerald Cup special? Well, what makes it special is the resilience of our community and talking to everyone here and just hearing their stories. Heck yeah. You know, part of uh, what I want to do today, for sure, is learn about your story a little bit, Sunshine. So, as an example, you know, the Delfina that I'm about to smoke on is some chronic. And this loopy fruit is definitely some chronic. Um, and you're the like craft kind of gal. And the wine that you're sipping on, as an example, is from Bryceland Road. No, this wine, actually. I, so, we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Emerald Cup. So, I went into my wine cellar, and lo I had this 2012... Tempranillo escape bottled from Berg and Cipolla, and this was grown and bottled right up the hill here at Bell Springs. So, Bell, Springs. Bell Springs. Yeah, it's really special to be able to like drink a wine close to where it's growing, and anyway, it's like a nice over 10 year old Tempranillo. So, does it, it does get better as it ages? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I never knew you're like a wine connoisseur. That, that I am. That I am. I, Weed and wine appreciation, those are my, my two things. Oh, it's, I never knew that. I never knew that. Do you pair your weed with wine? Of course, of course. What do you pair, what would you pair that with? Well, I made a two crosses with the purple Nepal, the Delfina that you're familiar with, and this other one that's still in production. But that one pairs really well with red wine in general. Really good. And then the Wonderless, which you'll be smelling here shortly, pairs really well with, with white wine and it enhances food. So that one, but yeah, um, I do enjoy pairing my weed wine. May I smell that? Yeah. It's delicate. It smells a little bit like a, a warmer vintage. vintage. I think 2012 was a warmer vintage. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good, it's good. Um, okay, let me ask you this. As a dry farmer, how do you, uh, how do you, what do you think about the way that grapes are grown and compared to cannabis, uh, I mean, they use a lot more water. Yeah, well, I actually, I actually spent a lot of time in the Willamette Valley there, going to wineries and then bringing the wine down here and selling it in Humboldt. And there they dry farm almost all their vineyards. And what I found out is that unfortunately, here in California, in order to get loans from the banks, they wanted them to use water. And they, they, they didn't, so they weren't so encouraged to dry farm their grapes. So now we have all these grapevines that are, are unfortunately addicted to water. So you got to end water addiction and dry farm. Water is an addiction for genetically, you're saying? For for um for plants, if you're overwatering, they, you know they just get addicted to the water. They get used to the water, and then it's harder to like back off or whatever. So yeah, so dry farming's good. Wow. So. You're saying that dry farming can be a technique that you can use across the board? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But you have to be in the right area yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, the, the grapevines, I mean, they dry farm them in Oregon, on the hillsides, on the hill slopes. It's a different kind of climate. And is dry farming, is it defined by your ability to 
There has to be a water table. Yeah, yeah. So they'll use, they may use a little bit of irrigation the first year or two while they're, while they're, while they're getting established. And then they can back off on the water and there's dry farmers. And when, is that a natural process? The yeah, dry farming? Yeah, yeah, it's great. It makes really good wine because, like, even when if the rains come or whatever, it will water down the fruit for sure. So, can you dry farm anywhere? Do you have to be real particular where you do it? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there are. I mean, here in Humboldt, just being down in the river valley and in this really nice uh, silt loam soil, alluvial soil. So it's a little bit easier to dry farm than maybe I would have, than you think, than we think. Yeah, you know, you just have to have, you got to put your faith in nature. You got to put your faith in, in what nature provides you instead of like imposing yourself or forcing what you want and let it do its thing. That's so cool. And you know, what's really awesome is like when we put ourselves in the right mindset there, you know, like we do our own thing. And I think you're a great example of an operator that's been able to stay true to like your energy and your authenticity through your marketing, your branding. I mean, you never, yeah. you never really wavered from that. I think. You know, part of yeah, part of yeah, for sure. I just like to stay true to myself. Otherwise, what am I doing? And, uh, it's just, and I'm always learning. The plant's always teaching me. Like, what's one of the last things the plants have taught you, would you say? Like, yeah. One of the last things? Yeah, yeah. Maybe as of late, as of late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I do have some seed plants. Um, I'm not really exactly sure. Yeah, right now, I got, like, my nursery. I got a few things. I planted some seeds and some genetics in there. But at the moment, like, I know there's some lessons, but not quite, like, on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Oh, yeah, that's for sure, for sure. But um, what, one of the things that I, maybe, I, well, we'll see. I do have some things I want to try out. You know what's really cool is a lot of times we get the guys that talk about their memories growing up in the Emerald Triangle, you know, and how it was during the war on drugs. And I rarely get to talk to a, a woman about that, you know? And so, are you comfortable sharing a little bit about what you remember about being here during the war on drugs? Yeah, of course. Were you uh, scared at some points? Were you always a fearless rebel? Always a fearless rebel. Really? Oh, yeah. No way. It was like a cat and mouse game. It was like kind of fun. It feels good to, a fear can feel good sometimes. You know what I mean? Like you get, you always ride your edges. And you Did your mom like, teach you that growing up or something? Did, did you teach me what? Did you? Where did you learn that from? Because it's hard to learn that when you're growing up. Well, like that's just growing up in a rebel culture, and we were all rebels, and we were all doing our thing. And fortunately, my mom, like she didn't, she really was fearless herself. So, like she, you know, it's like yeah, she was definitely fearless and true to her rebel self for sure. Like so, that helped a lot. That made a difference. <laughs> Would you go there? Would you go do activism and stuff? And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would you get pumped yourself? Of course. Of course. She'd take me out of school. She didn't care. She's like, it's more important for you to be seeing this. This is reality. This is what you need to learn. So she didn't really, like, help me with my schoolwork. But and it was a little disruptive to, like, go and, you know, go on the front lines with something or participate in some activism. But wow. Oh, disruptive for your schooling? What's up? Disruptive for your schooling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, you know, it was great. I was super happy to be getting that education. And it's true, wow, like when your mom or dad's pumped about something, you tend to like soak that energy up and yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, replicate you it perhaps. Yeah, yeah, you do. Can you share a specific memory? Like Ayan talks a lot about um, the uh, over by Whale Gulch, the... Oh, yeah, the, um, the emperor wears no clothes. He came. The, um, why is it? It's so funny, it's escaping me. <laughs> but her parents helped us, the Sikiyong. The oh, oh, the Sikiyong Wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that, and yeah. I think your mom was a part of that too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So you were part of that? Most definitely. Most definitely. Amazing experience. Yeah, for sure. Just hiking out there in the old grove and 
Yeah, it's really good. You, you can not answer any questions that you don't want to. It's all good. How old were you when you first started growing weed? I was... Uh, it depends. Because... It's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Your own crop versus helping? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I was helping from from early on. I mean, it's the family business. It's the family... It wasn't a business then, but it was the family patch. It was the family crop. And you helped your mom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was out there, like, watering the plants and looking after the crop while she was out doing activism. Yeah. Did you and your mom ever have a close call with law enforcement, helicopters and stuff? No, not too bad. Not too bad. We were pretty good about being stealthy. And it was always about, like, fly under the radar. And, you know, we kept it small for a reason. Yeah. It's all about how you manage your risk, you know? That's so cool. Yeah. Now, um, K Mud, what year was K Mud started? Really, so damn good. Maybe like 84? No. Maybe 86? 85? I can't remember exactly. Well, Sunshine, that's like the height of the war on drugs. Yeah. It really was, yeah. Yeah, those were some dark days. So around you, would you sense, would you say there was a sense of turmoil, unpredictability? Why not? The uncertainty ran deep for sure. It was tough growing. I mean, it was really, really. You were just packing them in the shade, packing them under the trees. Like it was really difficult. I mean, the prices, of course, made it worth it back then. But yeah, I mean, it was just. Okay, so how old were you when you grew your first crop, your own crop? I didn't grow a crop, I grew a plant yeah, in plant. the orchard, under the plum tree. One, but it was yours. It was my one plant, I was about 14. Did you have to sell it? or? Well, yeah, because I used it to pay my tuition to Petrolia High School. Oh, wow. That one, well, the yield off of that. I think I got like a quarter pound, which was a lot. For like a quarter pound? Yeah, for like growing in the shade. You, like you were maybe getting a, a two ounce, you're averaging two ounces, you were like two ounce plant, and then like your quarter pounders were good. So she gave me one of it, she gave me a good hole. Like, she got even cut the hole actually. But how, yeah. how much did you sell the four ounces for? I don't know. I mean, she, she probably sold it because I was. Oh, your uh, mom sold it. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because you're forky, exactly. Yeah, but that was fun. Oh, dude, and so that paid for like a semester at Petrolia, or you're saying yeah, it went yeah, towards that? Yeah, it paid for the year, I mean, yeah, that's back then, for sure. Got it, I understand. Wow, the prices were that high. Yeah. 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 It was different back then. Well, maybe uh, it didn't pay for the year. Maybe it only paid, I don't know, but it did No, I understand. For sure. Like, you know now how, I mean, somebody like me goes down Dutyville Road and still some of the signs have like bullet holes in them and stuff it was way more rowdy back then would you say or way more like closed off to the public i would imagine like outsiders would never come yeah but you know i mean outsiders did come to go get right, herb yeah yeah, yeah it's herb true and, but that that brought some roughness for sure you gotta remember too like that was also when just like the war on drugs it wasn't just us and weed but it was also like cocaine and things like that and so there was some, some of that going on too that that era definitely affected our community you know talk about uh she found like an ounce of shroom in, at her dad's and uh, it was like junior high or high school like kids were doing powder so she said okay you should do these shrooms instead she's like giving out shrooms at school or something like that yeah that's awesome that's <laughs> yeah definitely a little that's better so from that one plant, were you growing every season after that? When did I start? No, because Petrolia High School was actually like, we stayed there. There was like yes. a dormitory and you know, yeah, it was awesome. So then I would have started pretty soon after that, probably like. As a career grower? Probably, I bet I was about 17. As a career grower you started? I bet so, I bet wow. so. I, you know, I, and you just did it on your own, huh? Like, it, it's like... Yeah, yeah, I had my I had my ways. Like I said, I loved it. I loved, like... You grew up doing it. I could squirrel out there in nature. I mean, I could just, like, be as covert. I was so good at hiding it. So I just loved it. It yeah. was such a, like, challenge. It was good. That's so... A lot cool. more simpler than today, the challenges. And your 
mom knew about all your operations? Of course. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was your consigliere? Yeah, yeah, she, she gave me like this one place to go grow. It was like on this cliff side, and it was so hairball going up and down this cliff to like grow. But she gave me this little patch, and then like she was going to Baja, and I just so happened to see that she had like backed up all my weed and was like trying to figure out like how to hide it. What? And I'm like, Mom, that's my weed. And she's like, oh my God. So I, I felt kind of like privileged. I was like, wow, you must like it. I must have grown something good if that's what you're taking for vacation. Yeah, dude, that's so dope. What a compliment. And how old were you when that happened? I was probably like 18 or something. You're already on the ball. Yeah. Wow, sunshine. It was just fun. It was just like, yeah, it was good. So you would um, walk up amendments to the plot? Is that what you would do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was yeah. Steep. Mm -hmm. Fun. Was it a daily trip? It wasn't a daily trip, was it, back then? Yeah, yeah. yeah Every day? Was, you know, you'd have to hike out there. A little bit of a hike, but not too bad. But every day? It's like a daily thing? Yeah. Wow. Go out there, yeah. Every few days, even. Yeah, maybe not every day. Wow, so since you're 18, it's been on and on. Wow, that's so wild. These strains that you're working with now, how many years do they go back in your career? Not too far. These are fairly recent. Well, I mean, like, maybe 2015. Yeah, about 2015. It's almost 10 years, yeah, eight yes, years. almost 10 years, yeah. I'm gonna smoke. I said I was a minute ago, but I've been listening. This is the Delfina, and I have Freddie Lapierre, so I'm yeah. gonna smoke the Delfina. Let's check it out here before you smoke it. Talk about it a little bit. Yeah, that Delfina? Yeah. And you said this is good for anything in the water, you said. Yeah, the Delfina, I named what? it. I named it Delfina for, for the Greek. It's Greek, and it's for a woman from Delphi. And Delphi was where the oracle was. It's yeah. where Gaia originated from. And they were like... There What's were Gaia? What does that mean, Gaia? Gaia. It's like the... It predates Delphi. But um, it's another goddess type... Got it. ...culture, I believe. Oh, Gaia means Earth, right? No? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And so... It, in the city, for like 800 years in the city of Delphi, these vapors, they were rising up out of, out of the earth. There was a fault that went through there, and they were breathing the vapors. And they were like having, and the oracle was this woman. Yeah, yeah. Would, and the rich and the poor would like line up to talk to her in this Delphi, in Delphi. So, um, I've heard about the oracles. I'm kind of fascinated with yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I named it Delphi. Delphi. Delphina, Delphina, Delphina yeah. And um, I really like this high. This complements any kind of like water activity, swimming. You know, maybe if you're surfing or boating or just bathing or showering, but whatever. It's like it really seems to complement with water quite well. It's excellent for um, re reflection. The plants when they grow are, you know, they're. They're, they can get really dark, so dark and mysterious. So. I mean, the color, right? Yeah, 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 the appearance. Speaking of mysterious, what's your definition of a hippie? Well, a hippie is a free spirit, a free soul. Yeah, okay. I can dig it. Yeah. That's so cool. Dude, uh, I think in mainstream American culture, Hippies are so like deep, like so have such a negative stereotype connotation. Yeah. It's like they really want, they're afraid of that vibration. I, they really want to disrupt it. Yeah, I could go into like some deeper philosophical talk, but I mean, I don't know. No, no, I get it. I get it. Let's focus on the herb. I just I wanted to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Free spirit, sure. free soul. I yeah. like that. Okay, so Delphina, good for reflection. I'm going to smoke it for reals. And what else? You have some wanderlust? Yeah. Wanderlust. I was gonna suggest maybe checking out this uh, Redwood Summer. This is a good hack. 
Russia That's too. That's good. Get this the Nepalese, dude. Asher. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Sunshine just gave me some ecstasy right now. I mean, not like the drug ecstasy, but like a sense of ecstasy. Yeah. 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 Sure. Through, the, through getting high. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> What's Here, Redwood Summer? Huh? <coughs> What's Redwood Summer? Here, just, just take a little bit and like pinch it and smell it and squeeze it. That's so interesting. I know. It kind of smells like freshly cut lumber and Mexican sweet bread. Yeah, so the Redwood Summer is across this, this actually. Hey Agnes, you have raised your daughter well. Agnes, you've done a great job. I'm trying to do my godfather voice as best as I can. Wow, dude, I've never, it's like a unique smell. <coughs> it, does. it really does. <coughs> this, can you share the genetics? Okay, actually, this is not my original cross. This was growing, or actually originated up here in, in Harris, up Bell Spring, Bell Springs Road, a bit ways. And this grower, he saw me at the Emerald Cup one day, and he handed me a bud full of seeds. And he said, he said, hey, this, you know, this could be like an award-winning herb or whatever. I did place like in the top. I did get like 25th one year when I entered in the Emerald Cup. But um. Um, anyway, so he gave me these genetics. I've been working it. I've been kind of like not crossing it for the more wood Skywalkers. I believe he said something about Skywalker and platinum OG, a little bit in there. Yeah, it's like an old, like probably that old school Skywalker that people might remember. Just strong. Yeah, and this has got a great high too. It's like a really nice, happy high. That's so cool. Uh, so that's the Wanderlust. No, this is the Redwood Summer. Oh, Redwood Summer, excuse me, yeah. And then, Duh. You're getting me high over here. Yeah. This is the loopy fruit. Yeah, this is the joint dude. that I got yeah. earlier. And this is actually also not my original cross. This is a... Oh, this is nasty. It's like cheesy, kind of. You're going to love that. This is that. like the cheesy. This it is like... has a little bit of that, maybe. Oh, this is intoxicating. Oh, it's so good. Good. This is your selection of it. Yeah, this is my. This is right now a cutting, but I do plan on getting. A, I back crossed it into a, a blackberry Kush, and I do plan to get some seeds of it here. Dude, you guys have no idea. This is loud, sweet oh, cheese so funk. Good. So good. Such a great smoke too. So I brought like a jar. You ever seen? You ever hear a woman say? Have you I ever heard a jar of these to the party? Which is a pretty looper. This, What's that? This is, which one's this one again? The loopy fruit. Loopy fruit, yeah, loopy fruit. Yeah. Wow, dude. Because it kind of smells so a little bit like fruit loops, but then I was like, oh, we'll do the dyslexic thing. Yeah. And we'll call yeah. it loopy fruit. <laughs> That's funny. You know how you hear women say when they see a cute baby, they're like, oh, I can eat this baby up, or I just want to, have you seen something like that? Have you heard something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I figured maybe myself right now, like, just picturing a baby, like, oh, I can eat this baby up, or I just want to, have you seen something like that? Have you heard something like yeah, that? Yeah. So it's like I pictured myself right now just biting and eating up all this butt. It's funny, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, Pac-Man so or something. Wow. It's so pretty. It burns so good. It burns really nice. If I may, I think this is exemplary of when you have a refined palate and an experienced palate that you can make selections like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, think, you know, it's that 10 years in the wine industry that really helped me develop my palate find the language and the way to describe. I don't mean to have the lid off for so long. No, it's fine. Um, but that's that smells so nice. Yeah, um, I'd love a small butt of that, like smoke, if that's possible. Oh, yeah, you got, you got a joint of it, actually. Oh, yeah, duh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep on, it trips me out because it's called loopy fruit, but it's got the cheese. It so has, it throws me off in my has, mind. Yeah, a little tiny, tiny. It's kind of got a creaminess to it. Yeah, because I, I just smelled some Exodus cheese, and in the UK we had some as well. So that's like a really sweet version of that, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a super big fan of the cheese, um, but um, I really like the, the creaminess profile here on the leafy fruit, and then I did recently do a blueberry cheese cross with a uh, banana. That's going to be 
wicked good. That's, be, that, that That's a cheese, new one. Yeah, that cheese is just going to ride on that banana. It's so lovely. Oh, you so haven't good. floured it out yet? No, I, I made the seeds this year, this fall. And then I planted them 2024? a couple uh, no. weeks ago. Oh, what? You planted them a couple weeks ago? Well, I got it. I just, I got it. No, oh, it's so indoor, here. right? I'll, I'll, I'll flower it out in the spring. And we'll see what, what you know, what how it expresses and this and that. But that, yeah. So you're, really you're vegging them out right now? Yeah, yeah. I'll got be it. vegging them out all, all winter. And then I'll put them out probably like by March 1st. So they're going to be huge. No, they won't be that big. It's the winter. I think. I mean, the temperature is a little cooler. You know, it'll be a little slower. You know what you're doing. Yeah, it won't be too bad. I hope they're huge. That'd be great. That wouldn't be a bad thing at all. Okay. You know, it trips me out because since you've been doing it as a kid, you have this incredible experience that, in many ways, it takes time to gather this knowledge and experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean. Okay. Another pop quiz. What's one of the coolest animals you've seen out there in the forest when you're squirreling out there? Oh, uh, the coolest animal? Probably like, it's hard to say. I'm definitely a big fan of the newts, the little newt and salamanders. I love those. Those things are cool. The red ones? Yeah, they got the orange belly. Yeah, I like, I'm liking the newts. That's so cool. Yeah, I like those. Anything else like bears or, or mountain lion? You ever seen a mountain lion? Not, no. Not too bad at oh, all wow. on the critters. Not too bad at all. Pretty chill. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, in conclusion, you know, in your perspective, in your oh, perspective, yeah. Show you one more. Yeah, please, please. Okay. Which one's that one? Oh, this is the Wonderless. Okay. Cool. All of your weeds so unique. Everything's so damn unique. Well, yeah. that's me. I I did that for sure. That was that was a strategic. Super intense. That was a tactical season. sunshine. That was being tactical. Yes. yes. Did you wear camos back in the day? What? Did you wear camos back in the day? Always. I've always hey. been very comfortable. Hey, camo. I wore these, but I'm just like a. This is for for I fashion. Love, I love my camos. You actually did did the damn thing. Hell yeah, I love wearing camo. That's so cool. Do you ever camo your face? That I haven't done. <laughs> now this, this. Yeah, that wonderless is just like this nice orchard fruit, a little bit of peach. I'm stoked on that peach profile. A little citrus, peach, and pear. Sometimes I might kick out a little coconut. Really strong on the terpenes. Really strong on the terpenes. What can we expect from Symbol in 2024? Uh, well, just more, more good stuff. I mean, we'll see. I'm working on I got all kinds of little projects, and um, yeah. Um, what do you want the world to know about the Emerald Triangle? Just really how we started, like how resilient we are. We've always survived. We've always been fighting. We've always fought for this. You know, it's always been like it's just a new fight, or I want to look at it, but our resilience, and also how deeply spiritual we are too. Our spirituality around around the plant is always, always a good, good thing. So cool. Yeah, dude, I just gotta say, you just have this awesome sense of yourself and really calm energy, you know? I think like if in the Wild West, you'd have your own crew, it'd be like a crew boss or something, or, you know? It's like, you're not really daunted by much, you know? I think I'm just in the center of the storm, you know what I mean? Like, it's calm when you're in the center. <laughs> when you're in the center of the hurricane, everything else is blowing, and you're just like, in the calm, like, hey. Now, in conclusion, also, I think it'd be awesome to give your mom some love and a shout out. Like, one of, what's one of the most admirable qualities that you love about your mom or, you know? I really love, like, also her spirituality. Her spirituality around the herb, just having a mom that was so deeply spiritual with the plants really guided me and, like, just really showed me another way to, to grow and, and to grow with the plants. Yeah, it's just really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Really cool. Yeah. To grow up that way, it's wild. Yeah, and just her sense of adventure, too. 
really awesome. So adventurous. Oh, and for the record, again, like you said in our interview, you've seen Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. I did see yeah. him. Yeah. Mere Rashke Kamar. Yeah. You wouldn't even believe how awesome that concert was. It was like probably in. I don't know what year it was. It was like maybe the year before he died. It was his only U.S. Oh. U.S. tour he ever did. He did maybe like six shows in the country. And um, it was, I mean, I'll never forget dancing to the music and the culture. Did you was, dance hippie style or like that Arabic kind of style? Or I, just your style? I don't even know. Your style exactly, probably, yeah. Like yeah. The, the culture, seeing all these cultures come and bring their flags and it was their day. Wow. It was their day, and it was so beautiful to, to witness and yeah, to be there. Yeah, you're so lucky. And yeah, it was really amazing. That's really so amazing. cool. So cool. Wow. Um, anything you want to share before we conclude, Sunshine? Anything else at all? Because um, I can keep going and going. We yeah, just yeah, you know what I mean? I guess, like, really, honestly, it's like, for everyone out there, it's just, just keep supporting us. However you get our herb, rather you get it from the underground or you pull it off the shelf or however it is, always be asking for that good hippie love button. Because you know what? It still exists. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Sunshine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.